Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for uh, Saturday, uh, November 5th. Uh, I think it's a really good card for uh, for DFS purposes. There's a lot of good uh, instructive fights that'll help you both on this slate and to learn how to how to identify good plays on, on subsequent slates as well. Um, some good win condition uh, uh, situations. There's also some very strong inside the distance lines that will lead you to, you know, uh, to good plays. Uh, in addition to that, I do have a couple of leans as well. The other thing I want to announce is that I'm going to start doing um, a betting recap as well, or a betting preview. Um, I, I've been pretty successful at, um, at, at, at examining the betting markets uh, for UFC since I started looking at it. And um, by popular demand, I'm going to start releasing kind of my approach, which is going to be very, very contrarian and very, uh, I don't want to say controversial, but it's not the way a lot of people are going to look at uh, at some of these fights. Um, and it's very reflective of the way I look at sports betting in general. And I hope you guys like it. Again, just you know, full disclaimers that I've literally no um, – no trackable track record with this. So, you know, if you, if you follow what I say and lose, that's, 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 you know, whatever I, I, I'm going to be experimenting with this because people have asked me for my takes on these things and uh, I rather enjoy doing it. So that's that. That'll be in a separate video. Then. So we're going to stick to just the, the DFS uh, portion for this, for this video. And we're going to start right at the bottom and we're going to have uh, Vidal against Pasquale, a pretty low level female fight. And the inside the distance prop is kind of leading us towards avoiding this completely. So first of all, from a pricing perspective, uh, we have 8,500 versus 7,700. So, and, and the pricing is very reflective of that, um, of, of the pricing on DraftKings is very reflective of the actual fight odds, which are, you know, minus 140 or something like that. I guess you could say that Pasquale has a tiny bit of line value, but, but not really. But when you look at the inside the distance prop, because you do need something to, you know, aside from win equity in these fights, it's all really poor. I mean, you have Pasquale inside the distance is like plus about, if you account for Vig, maybe about plus 600. So maybe only about 15% to finish and Vidal, maybe about 20% to finish. And that's just not going to be good enough at this, at these prices. Um, they're going to be low owned, which is, which is nice, but I, I don't think that um, they're going to rate to be particularly good plays. And in the absence of a good inside the distance prop, you're going to need upside based on either a really high volume or takedown upside. And from what my research has led me uh, uh, to discover, there's really not none of that in this for either side. So uh, this this fight is going to be probably somewhat of a somewhat of a fade. Uh, I will say that in 150 max, I think that you should probably get a sprinkle just because of the you know even though the inside the distance prop is not great it's not like the worst you've ever seen. And since both these fighters are probably going to be, you know, 10% owned, uh, it's probably, you know, good, worth a sprinkle in GPPs, but in, in cash, three max single, you know, single entry 20 max, you probably want to avoid this. fight. Uh, this is the first uh, uh, fight. I have kind of an interest in, in taking an underdog shot at his price here. You have Jake Hadley against Carlos Candelario. And, and I rather I rather uh, fancy both fighters uh, on, on DraftKings, uh, not because of the uh, finishing upside, because we'll take a look at that. First of all, from a pricing perspective, you have Hadley is a minus two fifty five, and his price is um, let's take a look ninety two hundred versus seven k. So it's 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 it the pricing is pretty efficient. The inside the distance prop in, in Hadley is very poor. For that price, uh, he's inside the distance plus 225 or minus 330 or something like that. So that is really, really poor. But he does have a, a decent amount of takedown upside. Uh, he, he does have very good wrestling and he does have takedown upside So uh, because of that. So it does make up for that somewhat. But remember, at 9,200, you, you, need, you, need I mean, you need a big score to cover that. Where, where I have more interest on the DraftKings uh, side is Candelario. Because Candelario has very, very good. Uh, I mean, I I find he has he's very good scrambling. He has very good takedowns. I mean, his fight against Tyra in his last fight, he ended up like losing. Yeah, I guess pretty handily in the end. But Tyra's an you know, elite level grappler, and Candelario was very live in that fight. I mean, he was you know he 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 got a couple of reversals. He had a couple of takedowns on his own. He was on top a few times, and then his fight before that in the contender series. I mean, he. 
kind of got robbed. I mean, he 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 was all over his his opponent, had some takedowns, had some had some ground and pound or whatever, and then he got a split decision loss. Uh, Dana White was so taken by the decision that he signed him anyway. So uh, I think this is very strong play at seven k. Um, I think that that you have two flyweights who are going to be really active and a whole lot of scrambling and a whole lot of, of, of takedowns and a whole lot of stuff going on. Whenever you have a whole lot of stuff going on, you, you have the possibility for some volatility. And so I actually, I actually do like uh, both sides of this fight. Uh, I would say more on the Candelario side, just because of the price. So I think kind of right off the bat, I think you're, you're going to want to get some interest here. So we have Jonathan Munoz Jr. versus Sean Lian. Uh, pricing looks somewhat, well, I shouldn't say somewhat efficient because I'm looking at the, the money line. I see Munoz is minus 245. And boy, I, I was expecting him to be more like 9,100 or 9K, but he's only 8,700. I think this is some decent line value in Munoz, um, which I didn't really anticipate was when I was reviewing this. So... We're going to give Munoz a little bit of a, of a bump, but let's take a look at this inside the distance prop and see if it's at least passable. Um, let's see. Uh, Munoz Jr. inside the distance. It's plus, I mean, about 220 accounting for Vig, which is which is fair enough. You know, it's about, so what does that mean? About 30% of the time he finishes. I mean, that's, I mean at that price, uh, I don't know. Uh, and, and as far as the takedown upside goes, I think it's, I think it's okay. So I think given everything I said, the 8,700, the small line value, the small finishing ability, the the sort of take that upside, I think he's reasonable. This is going to be a play that's going to be determined based on ownership. So if he turns out to be um, very low owned, and and that price tag, 8,700, is the, is the type of price that does tend to be low owned because it's not quite low enough for people to, to put in their middling builds and not quite high enough to give that impression of being that, you know, that top tier fighter. So I found these 8,700, 8,800 fighters are usually, you know, fall within that, I like to call the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the range gap um, as far as ownership goes. So I think that Munoz is a very fair play here. Uh, I, I'm not seeing much on the Selenian side. Um, again, he's a plus 200. He's priced kind of as if, He'd be a plus 160. So I think he has negative line value. Um, and he might have a little bit of wrestling upside, but but overall, I think he's probably kind of a poor play. So for me, it would be some Munoz or, or nothing here. All right, Jin Frey against Poliana Viana. Um, it's priced pretty efficiently. You have Viana at like a minus 140. And on DraftKings, she is about 8,300. Uh, maybe she's a little cheap, but not really. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that uh, she is a submission artist. So let's just take a look at the inside the distance prop. You know, the funny thing is, is though you, you have this impression of her being a submission artist, but then you look at her inside the distance prop, it's really not that great. You know, it's minus 330. Um, so that means, again, we're talking at about 30% chance, 25 to 30% chance she finishes. Um, but I guess that's okay. The only thing that also is that, is that if she finishes in say the third round, she's not the type to get a lot of significant strikes along the way. So it's possible that she even gets a finish and it's still not good enough. Um, and that's, that's rare, uh, at 8,300, but in this case, because of the way she finishes, uh, opponents, um, it's, uh, it's not the greatest with respect to DraftKings scoring unless she gets into that first round. Um, so I think she's fine. Uh, the price is pretty is appealing, but probably gonna you know, I'll probably be under on Viana if that makes any sense. And Virginia Frey unfortunately has just a, a really poor inside the distance prop. Um, you have let's take a look at it. Frey inside the distance is you know, I can't quite find it here, but. It's, it's, oh, uh, Frey inside the distance plus like a million. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I'm not playing, I'm not playing her. And she doesn't have to take that upside. So, uh, it's either a little bit of Viana or nothing for me, but I'm not particularly thrilled with the Viana play either. So, Maria Batista, I mean, I was a, I had a feeling this was going to happen. He's 9,100 and he's 
being at, at, at 9,100, you're really looking like a minus 240-ish type guy, and he's a minus 300. I mean, he, he should be he should be more expensive here if we were just based on the win odds. I mean, this the narrative and the, the the talk behind this Benito Lopez is that he you know he had a future, but then he basically quit MMA to sell real estate, and three years later he's back in back in the cage um, with very little information about about whether he's actually been training for this or not. I mean, I've heard rumors that he might be, there was some contractual issue from his UFC that they've been getting him to, they've been trying to get him to finish his contract. And he's been basically putting it off. And now he's like, fine, you want me to get in the ring? I'll get in the ring, uh, the octagon. So uh, I can't prove that, but it makes sense to me. And for that, he's fighting a guy who's basically like active, fighting for his job and all that stuff at Batista. And I mean, a recipe for it really is a recipe for a first round <laughs> like, like demolition um but what's weird is that the the inside the distance prop do not support that 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 thesis i mean the, the inside the distance prop only has batista at maybe minus 200 or so maybe only about you know about 33 percent chance to finish and i'll tell you this if he doesn't finish at 9100 he loses you know what i mean i mean he loses on draft team. He does have some takedown upside, I suppose, to 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 balance that out. But um, it's a tough call because listen, you have a, it's really safe with respect to win equity. Um, but the 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 upside for for DraftKings is is not hundred percent clear. So I think he's fine uh, if he comes in really high owned, which I think he might. Um, be careful about going too crazy with it, but. I think that for cash, if you play cash, I think he's extremely safe. Um, but in GPPs, I, I, I have to want, I have to learn a little more about the ownership here because um, the inside of this prop is not great. I will say that. Okay, Miranda Maverick versus Shiana Young. Now again, here's another one. You have a minus six hundred, and unfortunately, minus six hundred favorites. If it was just based on win equity. So probably be priced around ninety eight hundred, but there's no, they don't really do that in 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 MMA pricing. They only do that in tennis. Um, so you're dealing with with, with the, when you ever have these minus one thousands or whatever minus seven hundreds, they're always a good price with respect to win equity. But what's cool about DraftKings is it's not just about win equity. You've got to be able to pay off your price tag, not with just a win. So you have to examine her inside the distance prop somewhat, and her inside the distance prop is actually. Pretty reasonable. I mean, she's actually about to pick them to finish inside the distance. Uh, the only thing, again, I would say is that you don't only need her to finish inside the distance to, to pay off this price tag. You, you really either need for her to finish in the first round or over a couple of rounds, get a lot of strikes and ground and pound and, and, and takedowns before you get to that TK, that, that, that finish later. Um, so, Look, she, she happens to be a good play. Um, and I think there are a decent amount of underdogs that you could get her in. Um, and that that win equity is kind of tough to ignore. And her inside the distance prop is 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 nice. I mean, it is actually better than Batista's, for example, and only 300 more. Um, so, yeah, I think Miranda Maverick is certainly in play. Uh, and Shanna Young, unfortunately, just when you're plus 400, you're just not going to get my money. The, the, the math just never, just literally never works out. In, in, in draft games. Okay, Derek Minner versus Shalyan Nuryanbeke. You have uh, minus 200, so it should be about 9K, 7,200 or so, and that's what it is. You have Nuryanbeke, 8,900 versus 7,300. And you look at the inside the distance prop here, and on the Nuryanbeke side, you have inside the distance about, is that a pick -em? No. Uh, plus one, no, plus 140. So that means about plus 160 ish accounting for big. So I would say about what 40% of the time he finishes. It's not terrible, right? And the other thing about William Beke is he does have takedowns in his back pocket. He's used them in, in, in almost all of his fights. So he's a very, it's a very, very strong play. And then on the minner side, um, he's, he's a finisher. You know, he, he's, doesn't always win, but when he wins, he does tend to finish. And if you look at the inside the distance prop, let's see if that supports that. 
you know, it, it sort of does when you think about it, because it says men are inside a distance plus 300. So even accounting for big, let's say it's plus 375. So about 20 percent of the time he does finish, um, he is going to finish this fight. And at only 7,100 or 7,300, I think it's reasonable. I don't think it's a smash or anything like that, but I think it's certainly a reasonable underdog that you certainly have to play. Um, so I actually like both sides of this fight, um, both the Nuremberg side and the Minner fight. So to kind of like keep track, I mean, I, we already have two, I think, very reasonable underdogs here between Candelario and, and Minner. And, and you have two guys at 7K, like that, about this price, you're really just kind of you're you're really rolling um, with what you can do. Okay, moving on to Grant Dawson versus Mark of Madsen. Um, okay, first from a win odds perspective, minus two twenty to thirty ish should be about ninety one hundred seventy one hundred, and that's what we're getting. Dawson nine k to seventy two hundred. The inside the distance prop is poor for both sides. You have Dawson. Uh, inside the distance. I mean, that's actually not bad, like plus 240. So uh, when, I, when I say plus 240, see what I'm doing here. I'm splitting the difference between the big, plus 200 and plus 280. So again, if plus 240, you're talking about about 30% chance this fight finishes. Finishes His price, it's it's okay. Not great. Not 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 bad, I guess. Um, Dawson also has some degree of takedown upside. And now we get involved in the discussion of like the style. So you have two guys that can wrestle, but one of them is more of an MMA wrestler, and that that being Dawson, and the other one, Madsen, is actually an Olympic wrestler, Greco-Roman style and things like that. So you know, people have argued about this before. You know, which who's going to get the edge in these types of matchups, the MMA style wrestler or the Olympic wrestler? And there really is no complete conclusion. I mean, if there was a big conclusion, one guy would be minus nine hundred, right? So it's, it's, it's tricky. Um, what I would say is that I do prefer the Dawson side for this reason. I don't see the, 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 the path for Madsen to really pay off the price. Okay. And you might think, well, wait a minute. Don't you really like wrestlers in these spots? Yeah. But, but the type of wrestler you need, is not the guy that's going to just go for takedowns. It's also got to be that guy that can either get a, a, real, a whole lot of control time or it's preferably a guy who's going to get a little ground and pound going too, okay? Um, so I think Madsen at 7,200 is a reasonable play, but I don't think it's like the smash-type wrestler that, that, I'm, that I'm used to recommending, you know? Um, remember, his win odds are not great. And even if he get you know if he grinds out a split decision, you know it's I don't even know if if, if he gets even one takedown round if that's going to be enough. Um, he ends up with eighty maybe eighty. Um, so Cody Durden last week, I mean he ended up I I thought with it, it looked to be like a really incredible performance. He got to take down every round, and he controlled the whole fight, and he only got like eighty five. It's not as if he got like a hundred. So, you know, it's not just about getting being the wrestler. You've got to be able to generate other points as well. So I, I feel as though that the, the finishing upside that Dawson presents, um, because he's just more well-rounded, um, maybe makes him, I would say, a better play than Madsen. Um, I think they're both just kind of decent. I would not, I would not run, go out of my way to 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 roster this fight. How about that? Okay, uh, moving on, you have Tagir Ulanbekov versus Nate Maness. Now here, you have a couple of uh, competing interests, and we'll get to that. Number one, competitive narratives, competing narratives, I guess. Number one is, uh, let's look at the price. He's a minus by 230-ish, so he should be about 9,100, I guess. But he actually is really cheap, Ulanbekov. He's 8,600. Um is extremely surprising um, that you would get this type of of, of, of win equity, especially in, in in a fight like this because you know Ulan Bekov takes carries with him some some negative narrative because he's he's just he's considered kind of like that black sheep of the uh, of the Khabib uh, regime, you know, like like he's known as the guy from Dagestan who sucks, um, but but. That's kind of unfair. You know, we talked about this with Nurmagomedov a few few cards ago. 
where people are like, oh, well, he's not as good as the other Nebraska Maddox. Okay, so what? Doesn't mean he's not good. So I think the same thing is with Ulan Bekoff here. I think he's actually getting, you know, getting a little bit too much shade cast on him uh, by by the community just because he's not as good as the other guys in Dagestan. I still think he's decent. Um, and the fact is he's getting an incredible amount of win equity, not to mention the fact that, you know, he is a takedown guy. I mean, all of his fights, at least the ones we've seen, I mean, he's gone for and received and gotten a bunch of takedowns. So, and it's really everything that you want in a, in a, in an MMA DFS play. You get win odds, excuse me, win equity and takedown equity. I mean, what more do you want? Plus you're getting a little bit of, 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 of steam on men in the, uh, in, in, in the content market. I'm hearing some people taking dog shots in Maness. So hopefully that'll keep Ulan Becca's ownership low because everything else about it looks to be a great play. Um, and uh, look, from the Maness side, same story. I mean, he's getting negative uh, win equity. He does not have takedown upside. And he doesn't have a good inside the distance prop. You know, um, you have Maness winning by TKO is plus a million. You have Maness inside the distance plus like 525. And Ulan Bekov, his win, win uh, his inside the distance isn't that great either. But again, we're, we we don't care too much about that because we're hopefully going to get that takedown upside. Um. Okay. Uh, um, Almeida Grishin was scratched. Chase Sherman versus Josh Parisian. I mean, unfortunately, from a DraftKings perspective, this is really easy. Um. So first of all, you take a look at the uh, the pricing. You have Sherman minus one thirty. To plus 110 it should be about 8200 8k and that's almost exactly what it is um and then you look at the inside the distance prop and and wow you know you have this is exactly what you want you have sherman winning inside the distance is a very reasonable plus 175 ish set counting for big given his price yeah parisian inside the distance is a little worse like plus 230 but what parisian has is he has the takedowns in his arsenal in his very last fight, he was gotten beat, getting beat up on the feet, and then he went to takedowns against Bado in, in in consecutive rounds, and and followed it up with some good ground and pound. And as you remember, when we were discussing the you know the Sherman Vandera fight, his last one, we were saying that that Vandera should would do very really well trying to take down Sherman. Um, he didn't, but the point is, is that we we had analyzed it in that Sherman would be very easy to or easy enough to take down. So I think. Parisian, he showed a lot of fight IQ in that fight against Bordeaux because he was getting pieced up a little bit. Um, you can go back and watch that fight. And then he, you can see he just decided that he was going to change his route and go to takedown. So that shows a decent amount of fight IQ. And I think that Parisian is going to continue to, to go off that momentum and go for these takedowns. So the point is, is that, is that while, while Sherman's win, win equity uh, and, 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 and his – his score is pretty dependent on this combination of win equity and finishing upside. I think Parisian ha adds the takedown and control time and ground and pound upside that Sherman does not. So while I do think that both fighters are, you know, certainly good GPP plays, I think the Parisian is clearly the better play. So, uh, in single entry, it would definitely be Parisian for me. Uh, if I was playing three lineups, I guess two Parisian, one Sherman, something like that. But Parisian is definitely the better GP, uh, the better uh, DraftKings. But again, make no mistake, Sherman is still a good play. That inside the distance prop is no joke. All right, so Neil Magny versus Daniel Rodriguez. So you have Magny at minus 120-ish, uh, which would correspond to about 8,300, something like that. And I think that's what you're getting here. Yeah, well, you're actually getting 8,400 to 7,800. So D-Rod does have a decent amount of, uh, of win equity. Um, in his price, that's one thing. Uh, but let's take a look at the inside the distance prop and see if that supports anything. Uh, you have, well, fight doesn't go in general is pretty poor, but let's take a look. You have D-Rod inside the distance as a plus 300. Um, okay. You know what I mean? Uh, not not the best. Not, not great. Um, a plus 300 plus the additional win equity. I think that definitely puts him in the in the conversation. Um, uh, he doesn't really have a lot of takedown upside, so I'm not factoring that in. Uh, Neil Magny, he also uh, has a he has a very poor inside the distance prop. He is plus like 700, so that's really poor. 
Uh, take 10 upside, not too much. And he has negative win equity. So I don't like the Magni side at all. So for me, maybe a little D-Rod here, but 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 not much on the Magni side. And then on the Rodriguez Limos main event with uh, five rounds to work with, this is definitely a type of fight that's going to benefit from the five rounds um, because, you know, the inside of distance prop isn't that great. And Rodriguez, to pay off, is going to need to get there, you know, some other way. So you're going to need five rounds to be able to, you know, generate enough significant strikes to, to you know, to, to get there um, because her takedown up, she doesn't really have takedown upside. Well, let's just take a look at the at everything. So she's a minus two twenty, so she should be about you know nine k or something like that. And she's actually only eight eight hundred, so she does have a little bit of line value. So I guess that means Limos has kind of some negative line value, line like negative line value. Is that what you say, or a lack of line value? And then you have uh, the inside the distance prop, which is uh, which is I imagine pretty poor. You have well, hang on, hang on. Rodriguez inside the distance is plus 165. So about it's plus 200 after big, which, which is what you'd expect, I suppose. Remember, don't forget that she also, you know, it's not just the first round that counts, second, third, fourth, and, and such. The Lemos inside the distance prop is actually pretty intriguing at plus 375. Um, you know, we were looking at some other fighters with, with worse inside the distance props a little bit earlier. And this is actually pretty reasonable for 7,400 to be a plus 360, plus 370. I mean, it's not the greatest, but it's certainly reasonable. And that plus having five rounds to work with, if in fact she somehow can generate the cardio to benefit from it, plus the 7,400, boy, I really wasn't anticipating doing this, but I do think that Limos has to be used in your your gpp lineups the only thing that's rough about that is these types of fighters usually generate a lot of ownership the main event underdog just because again you know you get those five rounds to work with cheap so it's kind of a shame actually that she's kind of like a fringy play because you're going to be lumped into other other people who are playing her for the for the other for other reasons you know i'd be playing her kind of she's just finishing upside sort of um, where most people are playing just because she's cheap, you know, and, and has a five rounds. So um, that's kind of a shame actually, because I do think Lee Moshe's win is, is uh, Lee Moshe's uh, inside the distance prop is not that bad for that price. And I might end up getting some of her anyway. Uh, Rodriguez. Yeah. I mean, she's totally reasonable. I think that, that the ownership might be too much for her. Um but you know, inside the distance prop is reasonable enough, right? Plus minus 220. Actually, with Vig, you have minus only 200. So 33% of the time she's going to finish. And uh, she's going to put like, a decent amount of volume up there. Is that going to pay 8,800? I don't know. Um, I do think if I had to guess, I would say the combination of, of, of high ownership, which main event usually gets, plus a kind of fishy inside the distance prop, plus... Her overall style not being conducive to takedowns probably makes her one of the weak, weaker of the main event fighters we see. Um, it's not like I don't think a full fade, but it's not definitely not something you have to get to. Um, all right, so just to re re review um, the 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 underdogs. First of all, the mid range plays I really like. I, I do like the Parisian play. Um, I think that the as far as the underdogs go, I think I identified quite a few of them. You know, I think Candelario's live. Uh, I think that, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Minner is live. And I, I actually believe that the, I mean, Rodriguez is live, but he's only a small underdog. And I think Lemos is live somewhere. And as far as I kind of chorus plays, I think one back up 8,600 is, is really, really strong. So if you were going to build, I mean, can't give you everything and but but let's just say you started with Ulan Beck off and then let's say you play Parisian and then we play <coughs> I mean either you're near in Beke or or Batista how about Batista because he's just a little safer I mean you're already off to the races here I mean you have three good plays that you could just and now I, I gave you a couple of good long shots to play 
even if you play only one of them, you could make your lineups work really easily. So I think it's a pretty, pretty, I don't say easy, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty easy card to build good lineups. Whether they actually come in is something else, but um, hopefully that helps. If I have anything that comes up, uh, I will uh, post an update and uh, be on the lookout for a, uh, for a, a betting video as well. Uh, thank you and good luck.